Next, we have an interview with uh, world-renowned trends forecaster Gerald Salente, and uh, he's going to discuss the Chinese, Hong Kong, world economies, plus all the stuff that's happening geopolitically in the APAC region, plus some, uh, the U.S. elections. You don't want to miss this because this he's, he's been on CNN, CBS, NBC, all the major networks. This guy knows what he's talking about. It's something different for our show, and I hope we can bring more kind, these, these kinds of guests uh on our show. So please stick around. And after the interview, we will, of course, have our Shame on You Award. And welcome back to the interview portion of I on Hong Kong podcast. On the line, we have Trends Journal publisher, uh, Gerald Salente. Now, Trends Journal, what do they do? They forecast upcoming trends in the global economy, the state of uh, the world when it comes to conflict and other issues that affect us. Uh, even though it might be thousands of miles away, but being Hong Kong, even the littlest thing can affect us because of our unique way that our economy is structured. So without uh, further ado, I welcome Gerald Salin to the program. Gerald, very nice to have you here. Well, thanks so much for having me. So I just want to get off uh, you know, to the races with, with this question. Your thoughts on the umbrella movement that has been initiated in Hong Kong uh, just in uh, the end of September. Is that the Occupy Central? Yes. Yeah, it's the, now called the Umbrella Movement. I mean... Now called the Umbrella <laughs> Movement. Yes. Here's... You know, I'm here in the States, so I'm really only getting the news from the major wire services, wherever they may be. Very interesting. <clears throat> For example, when you go to China Daily or um, uh, Global Times, very little coverage. And in the States, we get scanned coverage as well. So it's very foggy here to, to the people. And as I watch it, it seems like a standstill with nothing going on. Um, where the, where the, I'm just, again, telling you from the perception that I'm getting, not, not from the knowledge that I have. Mm-hmm. And, and that it's, it's not going anywhere. And what they're doing, as I see it, is they're just wearing out the crowds without getting much of um, a solution. And as we see it, again, the information that's reported here, what it is, is that uh, will there be um, <clears throat> any type of democratic elections, I believe, what is it, 2017? Correct. And that seems to be the major issue. So it's not getting a lot of play in the States when it does make the... The newspapers, for example, and I'm still a, a reader of hard copy newspapers mm-hmm. for a variety of reasons. Um, it usually makes maybe like in the New York Times, page A17. <laughs> so not exactly <clears throat> uh, front page stuff. Not at all. Most Americans don't even know what's going on. Mm. Uh, but one thing <coughs> I've noticed that uh, you've been uh, forecasting as a trend is that Protests is not just happening in Hong Kong, but it's actually becoming a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, it is because uh, systems are breaking down and people are starting to realize the power that they have. However, one of the you know, I've been at this a lot of years. I began my career. I used to run political campaigns mm-hmm. in Westchester County, which is the richest county in the United States. And I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I uh, taught American politics and campaign technology at St. John's University. Mm -hmm. And for many years, six years, I was a government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. Mm -hmm. I used to live between Chicago and D.C. So I know what it looks like, and I know how these things become effective. And I can tell you from my experience that one of the reasons these protest movements only go so far is that they don't have a, f- a battle plan for victory. And, and they go around <clears throat> trying in many ways to work within the system when the fact is there are no rules. If you play by their rules, you lose because they control the game. You know, it's like going to uh, Las Vegas and, and the game is, you know, it's a fixed game. Right. You know, they know how many people are going to win and how many are going to lose. So you got to bring in your own deck of cards. Hmm. So for these things to work, you, they really have to have an, uh, a strategy that everyone's on board for with a goal and an objective. 
And I remember what happened with the Occupy Peace Movement in the States. Uh, excuse me, Occupy, the Occupy Wall Street movements. Right. And they didn't have a plan. And they were criticized for it. And nothing happened. So, yes, we're seeing the populist movements moving around the world because people are getting shafted. It's very, it's obvious to everyone. I mean, in Hong Kong, for example, you know, from the data I read, you know, very few own most of everything. And, and to different varieties, it's the same thing around the world. There's a small club that controls the whole game and everybody's working for the man. And enough people have the dignity, courage, respect and integrity to say, I've had enough. You know, you're not my, you're not my slave owner. And I, and we're going to do something. So these populist movements are the future. And let's not forget, you know, there was, I'm here in America, there was the American Revolution, the French Revolution. You know, what had happened? It happened from a few people with enough courage to say, we've had enough. Right. So yes, we're going to see these movements continuing to spread. Your analysis is actually spot on because the, uh, the umbrella movement doesn't really have a plan. They come out with, uh, ideas over and over again, but some of them are not executed or they cancel them last minute. There really doesn't seem to be uh, any direction that it's going in at the moment. But also we see that from the other side, the government, before you would think that they would try to solve this politically, maybe uh, sit down and have serious discussions, but they <coughs> are now taking a w wait them out approach. And... Um, I don't know if that's that's a good strategy either, but I think a lot of people here also have memories of Tiananmen Square, and they don't want uh, a repeat of that. And China, I don't think, wants that image anymore, that when there's dissent, they crush it with tanks. Well, just for the record, what's going on in Hong Kong could never happen in the States. Why is that? <laughs> You gave it a clear new guy. Those people had a long time ago. I mean, this, this country has become so fascist, it's, it's disgusting. You saw what happened in Ferguson, Missouri. Yes. Yeah, that's only part of it. You know, they'll beat the hell out of you in no time. Yep. And uh, that, that's what you, you there, there's no rights left in this country. There's, there's so few of them. That have, the great ones have been taken away. They even have a thing called protest zones free speech zones. You, yeah. they'll, they'll lock you off into a certain corner free speech zones the whole country used to be a free speech zone and now the supreme court ruled that there's people if they don't want them in the free speech zones they're not allowed to go in there well you what they're doing in hong kong could never happen here if that happened in new york city this thing would have been over a long time ago I mean, they let Occupy Wall Street go on because it was in a park. And then when they, when they had enough of it, they cleaned out the park. Right. We got three uh, major uh, you know, throughways that are being uh, occupied uh, right now. And uh, it's not like the you – because know, what I saw in Ferguson was militarized police, not even it, regular – It's militarized everywhere. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You look at the last Trends Journal, the one before this one, mm -hmm. before Ferguson, we did a story, Cops Gone Wild. They've given them all this military equipment from Iraq and Afghanistan. They, got, they have Humvees. They have, you know, all these SWAT teams. No, it, it would never happen here. I'm telling you. Uh, like what's going on with the umbrella movement would not happen in the States. It would have been over a long time ago. Uh, I have to agree with you. Knowing, uh, you know, following the U.S. Uh, for for quite a while now, it it has seemed to have degenerated. But let's move on to uh, the next topic: uh, the state of the Chinese economy. Now, you talk to mainstream economists, and all day long they will say China's the model, China's the future, China's the way to go. But in your latest Trends Journal, you're saying that the Chinese economy is actually trend, trending towards a recession. Now, why, why do you uh, believe that that's uh, occurring in China? Well, because a lot of what – here, it's a very simple formula. Mm -hmm. If the United States and Europe don't buy, China is not manufacturing. Right. And if China is not manufacturing, Australia, Brazil, Chile, Bolivia, they're not exporting their natural resources. 
So you have a slowdown in purchasing. About 20 to 25 percent of China's GDP is built on real estate. Right. You look at China's real estate in 2013. Oh, it was up. Numbers were up around 27 percent. According to official figures already, it's down over 10 percent. Right. We see the photos of empty cities. Reports coming out. And again, I, these are only numbers that I know that are reported, so I can't verify their, their factuality. Mm-hmm. But they seem to be generally accepted as truth. You're looking at, what, 70 million luxury apartments that are vacant? So, you know, to me, China, I, oh, uh, they, the uh, Chinese Central Bank just announced, uh, I think, yesterday that they dumped in uh, several hundred thousand yuan into the system More stimulus. to pump it up. So it, it's, a, it's a Ponzi scheme, hmm. just like in the States. They have a different name for it. I don't know how you say quantitative easing in Chinese, <laughs> but I know they call it Abenomics in Japan. And they call it, uh, I'll do anything you want over there in uh, Europe in the ECB by Mario Draghi. Mm -hmm. And that's all it's got. So China, no, the China's economy is, it's on the downward slope. You look at their, uh, their GDP numbers, they're what, 1990 levels? It's quite low, yeah. Yeah. So no, it's not going to turn around. You know, by the way, China's greatest problems, not Japan or America, you know, with, with geopolitics, China's greatest problem is its people. And when they got 1.2 billion of them there, and with a lot of them out of work, you're going to see a populist movement. I mean, you know, and, and I, I was reading, and again, the facts only come out, you know, sporadically. I remember one year there were something like 50,000 uprisings in China. And, uh, you know, they don't get reported very often. No, China China's facing a lot of problems, and the biggest one is going to be internally if, the, if manufacturing slows down, there's, there's massive overcapacity in China. And, and that's, that's what I've been saying uh, on, on our show for uh, the last couple of months is that Xi Jinping, the president, is actually consolidating power through this so-called anti-bribery, anti-corruption drive, pl- getting uh, pledges of allegiance from the PLA. Uh, using the terrorist threat to put more police uh, uh, in, in every corner of the street, especially in Beijing. And I said it's not for security. They know th- things are coming down, and it's coming down hard. So they're preparing now so they can control the situation. Exactly. And, and they're, they're doing it in a lot of the countries. Yeah, and they're saber-rattling with Japan as a distraction and Philippines. Do, do you agree with that? To some extent with Japan, yeah, you know, what Japan, what's going on now, actually, this is a, this is a very, uh, it mirrors World War II. Mm-hmm. Americans, you know, all they know is that the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. They don't look at what happened before that. The Japanese were undercutting the market. Mm-hmm. And they, the Americans started cutting them off from uh, natural resources. They couldn't get rubber. They couldn't get oil. And Japan said, we're going to get our own. Well, Japan's doing the same thing now with Abenomics. Look at the look at the yuan. Uh, was it? It's fallen from fifty percent. Uh, it's gained. The, the the yen has fallen from fifty percent from the yuan, right? And from the and the and about forty percent from the yuan, the uh, the Korean currency, right? So what does that do? It it improves their export market. That's what this is about. So it's you know, currency war. Up about this. It's 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 a currency war for, and that brings on the trade war. 